Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the upcoming video games of October 2014. I'm Globku from Magical Noob and October, as usual, is a big month for video games. So let's get started! On October 3rd, we have the release of Super Smash Bros. on the Western market for 3DS. The Wii U release date hasn't been unveiled yet, so if you want to get a head start on the new Smash, you'll have to get it for Nintendo's portable device. If you've been out of the loop, the new Smash Bros. features 15 new characters, including Mega Man, Pac-Man and best of all, the Wii Fit Trainer. Yes, you heard that right. On the following week, October 7 is a big day for video game releases. Alien Isolation is a first-person survival horror stealth game that serves as a sequel to the original film Alien from 1979. Fans of the movies are looking forward to this game with very high hopes of it finally being the Alien game they deserve after the disaster that was Alien's Colonial Marines and I think the hype is justified because it looks really good. NBA 2K15 comes out on the same day. Gameplay-wise, I don't really see that much changes, but I'm no specialist. This time it seems you can scan your face and import it into the game, and there's also some new game modes as well. It's also got a ton of new animations and the graphics are also improved. If you're a fan of the series, I guess that could be enough. Still on October 7, Project Spark comes out for PC and the Xboxes. It might not actually be as much of a video game, but more of a video game maker. It's a great tool where you can make your own video games and share it with everyone, so I guess technically Project Spark is a ton of video games because you'll be able to play everyone else's creations, even if you're not that into making games yourself. I hope that you still haven't had enough of games releasing on October 7th, because the industry sure hasn't. Styx Master of Shadows is also coming out on that same Tuesday. It's a stealth action game where you play as a goblin with superpowers and a huge murderous intent. It's very sandboxy in the way you can approach a situation from a variety of places and actions and it's also got RPG elements where you'll gain experience to unlock new skills on a talent tree. This looks like my kind of game so I'll have a full walkthrough at our second channel when the game comes out. Closing the releases on October 7th, yes, we have one more, Drive Club, coming out on that same Tuesday for North America and the following day for Europe and three days later on the UK. This is the PS4 exclusive that focuses on driving and social aspects. You can create a club up to six players and complete challenges to gain fame. The tracks are inspired by real places and it includes a dynamic weather system and a day-night cycle. Finally, moving on from the clusterfuck of games that is that particular Tuesday, on October 9, Final Fantasy XIII comes out for PC. This was only recently announced, so I thought I'd do the public service announcement for those of you who didn't play this on PS3. Now you'll be able to get it for PC. All three games will be coming out over the course of the next year. For now, the first game releases on Steam on October 9th. Speaking of console exclusives, Rise Son of Rome, previously an Xbox One exclusive that came out on the console launch, is now coming out for PC on October 10th. They're removing the microtransactions from the existing version of the game and bringing it to the PC with all the DLC included. Fast forward a few days and it's Tuesday again! While this Tuesday might not have as many releases, it has two really big ones. The Evil Within, horror game from the creative of Resident Evil, Shinji Mikami, and developed by Bethesda comes out. It promises some really scary stuff, and I've been itching for a good horror game since Outlast, so I'll definitely be looking forward to this, but beware of the requirement PC specs to play this, because they are quite high. Make sure you have the machine to play it before purchasing it. On the same day, Borderlands, the pre-sequel, hits North America and then Europe on the following Friday. It's another first-person shooter in the style of the previous two Borderlands and it's a prequel to Borderlands 2. The plot follows the character Handsome Jack, which is a fan favorite. The game will show you how he descended into a villain. <laughs> At the same time that this game releases on Europe, F1 2014 will come out in the UK. North America will have to wait till next Tuesday though. It's a Formula 1 game, in case you hadn't figured it out yet, and it looks alright for fans of the genre. I can't really say much about it because I don't understand a single thing about cars, but you know, it looks good. We fast forward to the next Tuesday, which seems to be the last crowded of the whole month, but still has a couple of games that I am personally interested in. Starting with Screen Cheat. This is a first-person shooter where every player is invisible, so you actually have to look at the other player's screen to know where they are and then kill them. 
they took the cheating and made it into a core mechanic of the game, so I'm definitely curious about this title. The Legend of Korra is another title I'm interested in. First, because I'm a big fan of the cartoon series, and second, Platinum Games are making it. This is a team that made Metal Gear Rising and Bayonetta, so you know the combat in those games is pretty cool, and the Legend of Korra setting makes for a great game in concept, especially in terms of combat. They seem to know what they're doing, and while I've only checked a little bit of gameplay, I'm putting my blind trust into this developer, which is something I probably shouldn't advise people to do, but I'm super hyped for this. Still on October 21st, the new Just Dance comes out for pretty much all the consoles. You know the deal, you dance in front of your TV and you score points. This year's playlist is different, and they're doing some interesting cross-platform stuff, where you can dance with your phone? I don't really understand it, but if it works, awesome! Speaking of Bayonetta, the second game is coming out Friday, October 24th. One of the few reasons to get a Wii U, because this is a Wii U exclusive. This is a top-notch hack and slash and it continues the story of the first game. And hopefully it's as good as that, because the first Bayonetta was amazing. On the same day, if you don't have a Wii U, you might pick up the new Civilization Beyond Earth, exclusively for PC. Civilization is the king of turn-based strategy, and they're moving from the realistic historic perspective into space exploration and alien fighting. A whole new concept for Civilization, which provides a bunch of different gameplay mechanics while maintaining the core gameplay that identifies Civilization so well. And we move on to the last Tuesday of October, where we have four more releases, starting with NBA 2K15's rival, NBA Live 15, a franchise that doesn't really have a good history and EA is trying to make up for it. Maybe this time it will be a good competition for 2K? We'll see. Sunset Overdrive is also coming out on that day exclusively for Xbox One. You cruise around the city full of zombie-like creatures while moving in a similar way you would on a, let's say, a Tony Hawk game. But a bit simpler than that since you actually have to shoot while grinding and jumping around. Open world, character customization and a silly sense of humor are the ingredients that make this a promising exclusive. WWE 2K15, another 2K game, comes out on this same Tuesday. It looks super dumb, the way wrestling is supposed to look super dumb, so maybe it's actually a good game. I don't know, I'm not a big fan, but let me know if you're interested. I'd love to hear a fan's opinion on this release because I have no idea what to think of it. And our last release for October is, and I saved this one for last on purpose, Lords of the Fallen. If you've played Dark Souls, this game will immediately remind you of that, but with a faster pace and maybe not as hard and punishing as that title was. But this still looks challenging enough and I see a lot more variety in enemy types and boss mechanics, so definitely something I'm looking forward to. For those who don't know Dark Souls, this will be a third-person action RPG, where you can choose different armor and weapons to fight different enemies, and each one has a different weight and swing animation, which will affect the way you play the game. You'll have to figure out how to fight all the different enemy types, all the bosses, and it also seems to have an interesting story. So October will be closing with a bang. And that's it for our releases, but before I go, I've noticed that on my previous upcoming video, some of you were complaining that some games were missing from the September list, and I have two reasons for that. One, that was the first episode that I had this new layout going, and that took me so much time to make. So I kinda neglected looking into the releases with enough depth, and that ended up with me missing a few important games. The biggest one being Shadow of Mordor, which is actually something I'm super excited about too. So I apologize for that. The second reason is I can't cover every single game that comes out. My full list for October had over 70 games. So from that list I select the ones that will probably be the most popular and the ones I personally find more interesting. Bring that list down to around 20 titles, more or less. But still, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Leave me a comment saying which games you're planning on playing this month. There's a lot of really good titles coming out as you've seen. And as always, I've been Globku. Take care everyone, see you next time.